from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Global business jet operator VistaJet regards Africa as one of the regions of the world in which there are great growth opportunities for its business. Keith Campbell reports. VistaJet describes itself as the world's luxury aviation company and has three categories of customers – major corporations, governments and high net worth individuals. Company founder and chairperson Thomas Floor explains his concept of the business. VistaJet has 35 identical aircraft, identical to the aircraft we're on here today. Uh, they're silver metallic with a red stripe and the interior is seen. We have, for the first time, brought a business model to the business aviation market which allows people to just buy hours on an aircraft rather than buying the entire aircraft or having to buy fractions of an aircraft. Typically, the market is segmented into people who fly between zero and 50 hours per year, they would typically just call a charter company for their local needs, or if they fly more than 500 hours per year, they would probably buy their own aircraft. We're addressing at VistaJet the market between 100 and 500 hours of needs for flying around the globe. The aircraft we have are all long range aircraft. We're connecting people from point to point mostly from the more remotest places to either major hubs or from remote to remote. The world trade today and South Africa is one of the countries where there's a lot of mining industries etc etc and Africa in general is a very uh, resource rich uh, continent. There is the need for flights into other remote locations and that's exactly what VistaJet is doing day in day out. In 2012 alone we performed more than 10,000 single international flights transporting 25,000 passengers. About three years ago, uh, one of our clients, London based but uh, Nigerian, he asked me and said, Thomas, come down to Nigeria, you will see what potential there is for the quality of services you provide. I went with him to Nigeria and I saw the opportunity and within the last three years, starting from zero, 2012 alone, we had more than 900 takeoffs per year in that country. And that shows you the kind of potential we're having in the different regions in Africa. Now that success in, in, on the west coast of Africa has made me believe to study the rest of Africa. And what I saw is that throughout the continent of Africa, we see a lot of old aircraft, 15, 20, 25, 30 year old aircraft. Very little uh, transparency on maintenance track records, uh, pilots and so on and so forth. What I decided at VistaJet is we're going to bring brand new aircraft to the African continent because we believe that this represents for VistaJet one of the best opportunities on earth. And it was really the leadership of the Nigerian uh, operation and actually the Nigerian government who welcomed us so much into the country and bringing brand new aircraft which encouraged me to grow and branch out into the other countries and that brings us today here uh, after Congo and Angola over the last two or three days brings us here today to South Africa. Other news making headlines this week, NERSA grants ESCOM 8% yearly increases between 2013 and 2018. AFROC says it will enter into an arbitration process with Mattel and Grindrod's headline earnings were up 22% in 2012. The National Energy Regulator of South Africa has announced that ESCOM will be allowed to increase electricity tariffs at an average yearly rate of 8% between 2013 and 2018, an increase that was half the 16% sought by the utility in its application for the third multi-year price determination period. The Energy Regulator approved an 8% average increase per annum for the next five years. The average electricity price will increase to 65.51, 51 cents per kilowatt hour. In 2013, up to 89.13 cents per kilowatt hour in 2018. The total revenue approved for the five-year period amounts to 
and six, 553 million rands. Gas provider Afrox will enter into an arbitration process with steel producer ArcelorMittal South Africa over non-payment of take-or-pay agreements for the provision of oxygen, nitrogen and argon by Afrox to the steel manufacturer. One of the issues that we raised at the half here was ArcelorMittal, and I think it's important to give you a, a, a feedback on it. Just the background to it is that we entered into agreements in 1996. Uh, they would supply oxygen, nitrogen and argon. The oxygen and nitrogen part of the contract has in any event come to an end at the end of 31st of December 2012, but the argon portion continues to 2019. Um, the argon going forward, um, and, and this was in the half year results, was roughly 50 million rand a year in terms of a take or pay uh, responsibility for Victoria, at least for Aslington. What happened was that they said to us that um, they didn't think that they could continue to honour the take or pay contract and therefore they would stop paying us in terms of that and only pay us for the gas that they physically used. Um, so we are in, uh, we've agreed to go to arbitration because our commercial agreement provides for arbitration. JSE-listed bulk handling and shipping group Grindrod boasted good growth in the majority of its business divisions for the year ended December 31, 2012, with attributable income up 61% to 853.3 million rand and headline earnings climbing 22%. Headline earnings up 22 cents, uh, 22% earnings per share up 30% um, 30, 30 on, on prior year. Good cash generation from operations, 1.4 billion rands worth of cash generated during the year. The, net, the book net asset value continues to rise. We, we're a little bit over 16 rand at year end. Interest-bearing debt to, to equity has, has fallen a little further, down to, to 7%, obviously from that, that cash generation and, and, and the profits. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.